welcome to Kenwood Baptist Church. Good morning and welcome to Kegworth Baptist Church online service. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you're a regular member of our online congregation, welcome back. And if you're new to our church, thank you so much for joining us. This week we have a communion service which is led by the Reverend Colin White. So if you'd like to get yourself a drink and a biscuit or some bread and wine, then please join us later in the service for communion. Our message this morning is from David Hayward from Kegworth Methodist Church. This week we have been busy with Kegworth Baptist Church and let me tell you a little bit more about it in this video. Hello and welcome to the Kegworth Baptist Yard Sale. Today we've been part of Kegworth Village's yard sale raising money for cancer research but as you can see we've been raising money for the chapel today. We've had a really really good turnout and lots of people have been really supportive. Just to let you know what's coming up in the church diary this week, on Tuesday at 7.30 is our Bible study, which is online currently. If you'd like to join us, please contact us and we can send you an invitation. Zoom prayer meeting will be at 10 a.m. on Friday morning. And equally, if you'd like to join us, please contact us and we can send you an invitation. This week, it is Maurice Keeley's 91st birthday. And Maurice, everybody from Kegworth Baptist Church wishes you a fantastic birthday and a speedy recovery. So let us all join together, as is tradition, singing happy birthday to Maurice. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Morris, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Morris, sending lots of love and birthday wishes from everybody at Kegworth Baptist Church. And we're going to start this morning's worship with the song, How Great Is Our God. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty that all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. The darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God And age to age he stands And time 
Let us take some time together to pray. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this week and all that it has brought us, for some happiness and good news and for others challenges. But we thank you, Lord, that you are always with us and you're always guiding us. Lord, we pray that you continue to protect us and guide us as restrictions reduce with COVID. And we just pray that you keep us all safe and that everybody that we love is safe and your protection is over them, Lord. We pray for areas of the world where there is unrest and fear. And we pray for all of those who live an uncertain life. We especially pray for people in the Gaza area and people in northern Mozambique. Lord, we pray that you send protection to all of them and that there may be healing in those areas. Lord, we pray for members of our congregation who are currently not well at the moment. And we pray especially for Anne and for Morris. We pray that you send your healing and your love and your strength to them, Lord. We also pray for members of our congregation who've been bereaved. We pray especially for the Smith families and for the Hall family. And we pray that you be with all of them and that you send your healing to them, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for members of our fellowship, and we thank you that at Kegworth Baptist Church, you're here protecting and guiding all of us. And we thank you for the opportunity yesterday to be part of the community and interact with people from around the village and further. We just pray, Lord, that you use us and this church to help spread your message and the gospel into the wider world. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. And now we'll just take some time to pray for people that are on our own hearts and in need of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Hear our prayers. And let us join together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to have a Bible reading, and then David will bring us his message. And then Colin will lead us in communion. Thank you. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20, the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Thanks be to God. Well, <coughs> greetings from Colville once again to the good folk of Kegworth Baptist. How nice for you to invite me. And here we are. Well, uh, you'll be 
viewing this, I would imagine, on the 30, 30th of May, um, and uh, that's three weeks away from me, <coughs> and uh, in between uh, when I'm recording this and when you view it, um, Wendy, my good wife, and I will be have been away on, do you remember these things called holidays? Wow. <laughs> well, we go, um, for us, we go next Saturday on the 15th and we come back on the 29th. And then you will we'll, we'll be viewing this uh, the very next morning. But the 30th of May in the uh, church calendar is Trinity Sunday. And so that's where our thoughts are going to lie today, on the thought of Trinity. Now, it's strange, really, because um, nowhere in the Bible is the word Trinity mentioned. Um, it's not included in Scripture in any way. And the other uh, odd thought about this in all the other festivals of the year, um, we celebrate an event like Christmas, the birth of Jesus, like Good Friday, the death of Jesus, and Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Jesus, Ascension, uh, and all the other festivals that we celebrate, uh, harvest, uh, are, are all um, events that happen that we remember uh, those things. But this is one uh, Sunday in the year when we think about the doctrine of the Trinity. So it's not an event, it's a doctrine. And this wonderful idea of uh, the Trinity um, does give people a scared feeling because how do we explain something that is unexplainable? Well, my friends, I'm glad that's so, because if God was explainable, he wouldn't be God, would he? Mm. Interesting thought. Well, we're going to be digging deep into the soil of God today, because today is we're going to be thinking on Trinity Sunday all about God. All about God. How good is that? For us to spend a morning thinking about God and uh, his uh, qualities and his attributes. Now, there is a history to the Trinity story. And the Jewish nation knew God. He was a judgmental God in the Old Testament. A fearful God, one of smoke and cloud and fire and flame. And uh, the Jewish nation lived under the uh, covenant of the Ten Commandments. And you disobeyed those commandments at your peril. So the Jewish nation, the Hebrew nation, knew about God. They knew all about God and his rules and regulations. But then Jesus came onto the scene. And this man, Jesus, lived his 30 years and he died a tragic death on that Good Friday. And then the believers knew about his resurrection, how he'd risen from the dead in, in great power. And he'd appeared to many over those succeeding weeks. And the early church began to battle with the thought of how this Jesus could be holy man and yet holy God. And the early church fathers um, began to formulate uh, how this Jesus could be God and yet man. And it ha 
had an ology name and it became known as Christology all about Jesus and his humanness and his divineness and the, one of the reasons that they uh, came to this conclusion was only God could take away sin only God could remove sin so if Jesus could forgive our sins then he had to be God as well so we here we've got two parts of the Trinity we've got knowing God and knowing Jesus and then on Pentecost Sunday the Holy Spirit came down in power and he was an empowering energizing enlivening God through the Holy Spirit and surely this Holy Spirit had to be God too so it raised up this puzzler that um, the early church had to deal with how could man's experience of God in this form match with only one God if we have God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and yet only one God how can there be how can this be reconciled hmm not an easy conundrum for the early church to ponder with but it became easier if we invent the word Trinity St Augustine was the first one to tackle this doctrine the doctrine of the Trinity and the early church fathers spent years debating and discussing and pulling this apart and putting it back together again how could one God be at the same time Father Son and Holy Spirit how could God who is one God be three different people Tertullian he was one of the early church fathers theologian um, suggests that God is one substance existing sorry I'm reading that wrong Tertullian suggests that God is one substance consisting of three persons describing their experience of God with his power as creator redeemer and strengthener so that was Tertullian's view and it's the Trinity is one way that man man's experience of this enormous God can be captured in words now though down the years there's been many ways of understanding the Trinity uh, to try and help us grasp what it's about there was the clover leaf there's water ice and steam there's even human beings with uh, minds body and spirit and all these uh, illustrations fall short of helping us grasp uh, the real truth behind the Trinity I came across a, a thought many years ago now about a letter to explain how the Trinity can be three and yet one Father Son and Spirit let me explain what I mean by a letter let me suggest to you uh, Wendy my wife and I are going to have a party and uh, to celebrate some event in our lives and um, 
we think of this idea of, of having a party and we say, well, if we're going to have a party, we better invite people. Hmm, that's a good idea, said Wendy. Let's gather a bunch of people round to help us celebrate. Now, at this minute, the idea of this party, this gathering, is just in our heads. Just a thought, just a, a notion of it would be a good idea to do this. Now, God, the creator, thought about the world and planned the world and all that was going to be in it. And that thought went far and wide. It was just God on his own. And he reasoned that it would be good to plant on this earth human beings. So God's thought of an idea, of a notion, that it would be a great idea to create human beings, equates in a way to this idea of Wendy and I having a party. Now, if, if, if this idea of our party stays in our heads, just as a notion, just as an idea, that's all it remains, just a thought in our heads. But as this notion begins to formulate in our minds, <coughs> excuse me, as this notion begins to formulate in our minds, we say, well, if people are going to come, they're going to have to know about it. So Wendy goes to the card shop and gets some invites and envelopes. And we send these invites out to those we want to come. Now, let's say, uh, Johnny Day, who is at your church. I'm sorry I'm using you, Johnny, but uh, I think you're the only person's name I know at, at Kegworth Baptist. So let's say we're going to invite Johnny Day to our party. Now, while we just thinking about inviting Johnny to our party, while it remains in here, that's where it stays. But for something to happen, for Johnny to respond, he needs to get an invite. So we get a, a card and we say, Dear Johnny Day, you were invited to David and Wendy's house for a party on such and such a day at such and such a time. Now the word has become flesh. It is now visible down on paper or on card, if you like. And the word has become visible. Now, so there's this card sitting on my desk. Dear Johnny Day, please come to the party, blah, blah, blah. Now, if it sits on my desk over there, the word has become flesh and visible. But Johnny Day doesn't yet know anything about it. Now, the word has become flesh. The thought has occurred, God the Father. The word has become visible in Jesus. But that's as far as it goes so far. Now, if I take that card and I put Johnny's address on it and a stamp and I stick it in the post box and... Uh, a couple of days later, the letterbox in Johnny's house goes clack and uh, this card drops onto their doormat. And Johnny picks it up and opens it and he says, Oh, David and Wendy have invited me to a party. How wonderful. But if Johnny puts it on his desk and does nothing with it, so there it remains. Now, for this circle to be complete, Johnny has to reply to that invite and ring me up or send a card back saying, um, yes, I would love to come. Or perhaps no, I would like to come. Uh, but for the circle to be complete, Johnny needs to respond to that invitation. 
Holy Spirit moves and calls us to Jesus. Sorry about that, my phone just gone bing bong in the background. The Holy Spirit needs to record, uh, to cause us to respond to the invitation. And we hear what God is saying through the Holy Spirit about Jesus. Father, Son and Spirit. Idea, letter, response. If we just have that, the idea for this party and do nothing about it, nothing happens. If we have the idea about the party and buy some invites and write them, but they sit on my desk, nothing happens. If we have the idea about the party, we write the invites and we post them, but the receiving person does nothing about it, nothing happens. You need all three elements to come into place for the party to take place and Johnny to come and enjoy the cream tea with us or whatever. Don't get excited, Johnny. Uh, we're not planning on anything just yet. I hope you grasp the idea that all three elements need to be there for God to work. We need Creator God. We need the Son to make Creator God real to the world. We need the Holy Spirit's prompt for our response to be made to the love that Jesus shares with us. If all these three elements are in place, then the Godhead works. Now it can be confusing. I know it can. And I'm glad it is. If you are still confused what this Trinity is all about, then I'm glad. Because if we could really explain what God is all about, then God wouldn't be God. Because God is far bigger than any of us can imagine. But this God who calls us friends, loves us to the uttermost. And as the Holy Spirit makes Jesus real and makes us understand what God is all about, then this Trinitarian God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, works in our lives and there is a response. We find we can trust Jesus with our all. <laughs> Trinity Sunday can be a bit of a puzzlement. But it's all about God and him desiring to have a relationship with you. And that's what it's all about. God wanting a relationship with you. Bless you, my friends. Go away and uh, tease this puzzlement out a little bit. And have a look at Matthew 28 at the end of that uh, great gospel of Matthew. And see there where it says about Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And realise that God is calling you into a relationship that wants to be complete in him. But it needs a response from you if you have never and it may be the case if you have never responded to God in any way then do so today call on the Trinity and let him speak to you God bless you all Amen
my Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name. We're here to look back. We're here to look forward. We're here to remember one who has died. Here to greet one who lives. We're here to share bread and wine. Here to share fellowship together. We are here in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who invites us as he invited his first disciples to take supper with him. He shared bread and wine with one who would betray him, the one who would deny him, and those who would abandon him in his hour of need. He shared bread and wine with those who couldn't stay awake with him for one hour, those who for all their enthusiasm couldn't understand and who were puzzled and confused and full of doubt and fear. He invites us to share bread and wine, you and I, who are weak and sinful, who daily fail him, 
who prefer our ways to his, who have barely begun to understand the true meaning of discipleship. So though our faith may be frail and our faults are many, though we have many questions and much to learn, let us come now and share together bread and wine and come and find life for our souls. Let's pray. Gracious God, we're reminded that at this table of how much you love us, of how far you prefer to go on our behalf, our total sacrifice you made in Christ. We've come to celebrate your going the whole way in taking on human flesh, how you went the whole way in surrendering your only son, enduring death and agony on the cross. So gracious God, remind us once more, through this bread and wine we shall share, through the words we will listen to together and the prayers we offer. Remind us of all you have done and all you have done, all you have given, and help us in return to give out all to you. So we thank you. We thank you for this bread. We thank you for this wine. We thank you for the opportunity to share together through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in memory of me, the blood of Christ. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Your death, O Lord, we commemorate. Your resurrection, we confess. Your final coming, we await. Glory be to you, O Christ. Let's pray. The bread has been broken. The wine poured out. The supper is over. And the world still waits. So let us go. Offer our service, our faith and our love. Until the world rejoices and your kingdom has come. And may God go with us all, today and always. Amen. This world reveals 
and wars to own. All I once thought gain, I have counted lost, spent and worthless now compared to this. Thank you, David, and thank you, Colin, for your words and ministry this morning. If anybody needs any prayerful or practical support, please do contact us and we will do our very best to help you. Just before we end our service this morning, let us all join together in sharing the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. And we're going to finish this morning with the hymn To God Be the Glory. the 
glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin. Oh